Since my very first animatronic eye mechanism, people have suggested that I should use a camera to identify and track people, moving in real time and maintaining eye contact with anyone who happened to walk by. A lot of my viewers actually did this themselves, but I was hesitant. One, because I thought it would be really difficult to code, but more so because I don't like when robots have a pair of eyeballs, but then the actual device it uses to see the world is like a camera mounted in its chest or something. I want to build a robot which sees the world through its own eyes. So in order to make this work, I need to find a way to put a high definition camera inside of my animatronic eye mechanism. I was anxious about the feasibility because there are a lot of constraints here. Firstly, the mechanism itself is pretty tight, but there's also a lot of obstructions past the camera like the pupil hole and the eyelids. On the programming side, the step which had intimidated me the most originally, I needed to take the video feed from the camera, identify and track a human face and then use that to control the position of the eyes. I thought that there must be a thousand different ways of doing this and then to tie everything together, this whole system needs to be responsive enough to look convincingly real. I started out by looking at a few different types of cameras I could get on Amazon and AliExpress. Obviously I was looking for the most compact design possible so that it could hopefully fit it into my existing eye mechanism. Luckily I was able to find one that fit right into the eye and the only modification I needed to make was to the actual eyeball itself, adding a space for the housing of the camera and using the pupil hole to actually see through and the camera is held in place with the snap fit clips at the back of the eye. When it comes to programming, I like to keep things simple. My mechanical design is where I make things unnecessarily complicated. So the fastest way I found to get quickly up and running was using MediaPipe, Google's open source framework for building machine learning pipelines. And since it all runs on the device itself, that means I'd eventually be able to put it on a Raspberry Pi or something else more portable than my PC. My strategy was to take the live feed from the camera calculate the X and Y offset between my face and the center of the screen and output this error to the eye mechanism's control board, which would then move the eyes to try and get the error down to zero. There were three distinct phases of fighting with the code to get this working. Initially, it just looked like everything was far too slow to work properly. Basically, the PC is running really fast, sending a ton of error message reading to the microcontroller, which then has to move the servers for every single reading. So actually for this to work, the controller would have to be much faster than my PC to keep up. So I limited the number of reading to 20 per second and made it so the controller only looks at the most recent reading. Secondly, the eyes were erratically jumping back and forth. This was a pretty simple one, I just needed to add a dead zone so that if I stayed only within a few pixels of the center, the movement script wouldn't trigger. The movement started looking a lot better, but it would occasionally get stuck oscillating between two points as it tried to find me. The fix here was to add some smoothing, so if there was a big error, it could make a big jump in position, but if the error was only small, it can only make small movements, preventing it from overshooting and darting back and forth. So this was a cool and fun thing to play with, but I wanted something with a bit more function and personality. I decided to build upon my original iMac design to add a neck and body, and I knew that Onship would be the perfect CAD tool for this job. With Onship, I can treat CAD the same way software developers treat code, using branching and merging to test out alternate ideas and manage the evolution of a design. Want to try a different eyeball attachment clip? I can do that in a branch. Want to try out a different neck pivot? I can also do that in a branch and each branch is its own workspace tied into the main design, so I can experiment freely without ever worrying about messing up my core model. When something works, I merge it back in, picking only the changes I want to keep. It's precise, visual, and way less risky than juggling separate files. Onshape also gives me a robust version history with real-time updates. I can see when changes happen, compare branches or even versions side by side, and roll back when I need to. You get visual merge lines that show how your project has evolved, so tracking the design journey is straightforward and transparent. If you want to give it a go, check out the link onship.pro forward slash Will Cogley to get a free hobbyist license. And if you're a pro, you can get a six months trial of their pro plan. Onship has completely transformed how I design and share my work. Huge thanks to them for powering today's video. I started out by designing a way to let the entire model rotate smoothly. And to do this, I designed a 3D printed thrust bearing which is a type of rotating bearing which supports a predominantly axial, in our case straight down, load. Because I thought that it would be a fun challenge, I designed a tapered roller bearing, which rolls diagonally on these little cylinders rather than a ball. You also need a ring to keep the bearings apart from one another, which is called a raceway. In my first design, I thought I could get away with a very simple guide like this, but it made the whole thing quite unstable and let it get misaligned. So I made a new one which prints together in two parts and then screws together, 
holding the bearing on a conical pivot, and I think this works pretty well. It's not perfect because I can't print a perfect cylinder. There will always be a bump on each layer where the print starts and finishes. To drive this thing, I use a servo face down with a spare gear driving an internal gear. So everything is kept really compact and discreet. The Y axis is also just a simple lever which attaches using a slightly modified version of the eyelid pivot holders. And then the main pivot for the neck is a modified version of the PCB holder which has a big fat print in place conical pivot. It only uses six MG90S servos, so it's compatible with my original iMac control board. But how would I control this thing in a natural and convincing way? It moves left and right, just the same as the eyes do. So if I use a similar script as last time to simply follow a person around at all times, then the eyeballs are basically redundant because the neck will do all of that work to center the eyes. So I thought about how this kind of motion would work with a real person. I imagined walking down the street and bumping into a friend. Firstly, I spot something in my peripheral vision. Then my eyes move to the person's face and I recognize them. Then I look away and hide my face because I'm awkward and I don't want to be disturbed. Just kidding, I turn my head to charismatically greet my friend once I've worked out that I recognize them. Now I don't have any kind of scientific study to back this up, but I think usually a person's eyes will always move quickly to anything that catches their attention. And then once they've made their mind up that they're interested in whatever it is they're looking at, their head will turn to face it head on. So I made a kind of timer in the code, which is first triggered whenever the eyes have moved away from their centered position. The eyes are running constantly to track the person's face, but if they're not centered after 1500 milliseconds, the whole head and body moves to recenter the eyes. So this keeps the eyes moving at all times, but the body is only moving to naturally sync up with the eyes after a short period of time. So the final step was for me to add a bit of personality with a custom shell. I am of course known for my cutesy, innocent, friendly design style. So it was nothing out of the ordinary at all for me to make this cute baby Gundam-esque robot shell for my mechanism. I do find it quite hard to design in this way because I'm doing a mixture of hard and soft forms, which could be seen as a job best left to polymodeling software like Blender, but I need it to be in CAD to work out how it all fits together with the mechanism. So my approach is usually based around using a surface base, lots of cuts to add layers of height variation, and then details, bevels and chamfers added in last. A few people have already told me that they hate this design, but I think it's pretty cute. The reason I made this was firstly so that I could start developing the embedded camera eyes, which I think are going to be a huge part of what I go on to make in the near future, but also to kind of gauge interest and hopefully warm you guys up to the idea of small scale, stylized and optimized robots. My robotic head is very popular in terms of views, but for one, it's kind of a long way off completion, and two, it's so unbelievably complicated to build, particularly with the silicone, that to build it yourself, you have to be pretty much talented enough to have designed it in the first place. And even in saying that, sometimes I feel like I don't have the skill to build it. So I want to build something with all the same appeal of the head, that uncanniness, personality, and relatability, but in a design which doesn't require 2000 pounds and a PhD to build. And I think the key is in the balance of the design, animation and biomimetic elements rather than just 100% focus on being lifelike. One of the next things I want to do is to use a camera like this in my ultra realistic eye. I've got some ideas of how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to leave the details as a surprise until next time. In the meantime, if you want to experiment with this design, you can download it for free using my links in the description. And if you want the full downloadable exportable CAD, you can get that on my Patreon page. I'm also going to start selling this specific make of camera on my shop, since it seems pretty hard to find outside of AliExpress and Taobao. Thanks again for watching guys, and an even bigger thanks to all of my supporters. See you in the next one.